Hello and welcome uh, to the podcast with myself, Michael Jansen, and my good friend, Alicia Knowles. Hello, Alicia. How are you? Hi, Michael. What's up? How you doing, girl? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, the weather is... It's the 15th of July, um, and it's the dead center of summer, and it's cloudy and borderline quite cold in London. Um, and I'm starting to understand why people in England don't like this weather. <laughs> I'm, grad- I'm gradually it's only up taken on it. 17 episodes to get here yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're making real progress here so yeah so so let's jump into today's episode so we we picked up on when i sat down i was kind of like oh you know there's no news in the world there's no nothing interesting going on and then i was kind of like brought myself out of my mental slumber and then looked at the news i'm like oh shit yeah i've seen these things i know i recognize these these headlines there is actually a bunch of interesting stuff going on um, one of them will become will form sort of our main point of discussion for today. Uh, but I wanted to start with these two. Um, number one, obviously, I'm sure everyone's heard about the TikTok, the potential, 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 alleged TikTok ban in the US. And it's not just the US, apparently. There's other pretty big countries. Obviously, India's already done theirs. There's potential, apparently, of it being done in the UK as well. Why, why, why does the US want it? But why do you Americans not like TikTok? What's wrong with you? Uh, I don't What's think the it's a TikTok thing. I think it's the China thing. But <gasps> that's just my opinion. Well, you you are quite right. That's actually exactly <laughs> what it is. Um, and it, it, I think it's quite interesting because this is um, uh, not that we were around uh, at the time, but this is uh, seeming very Cold War ish. We don't like China things. We don't like all of this, blah, 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 blah. You know, we'll still have political conversations, but there's a lot of, there's just a lot of tension. The thing is, is I think we say that now, and, and I don't mean like, I don't want this to come off um, prejudice or racist in any way, but in the age of data, mm-hmm. is is this, is it not scary to have an app on literally everybody's phone or at least the younger generation's phone yep. coming from the enemy? You know what I mean? Like, if there is a yeah, data war, it would be... Yeah, in the US, of course there is. Yeah, absolutely. So, so like, in the, in the realistic terms of it is, like, I think there might be more to it than we know. And this is when, like, another documentary like Snowden comes out or movie mm. like Snowden comes out in five years and we're like, oh my God, we fell for it because we wanted to TikTok dance. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's the, and that was the, the downfall of one of the world's superpowers is TikTok dancing and, and the savage and renegade. So uh, a couple of interesting <laughs> things that actually came up. So th- there was a, um, there is a TikToker and uh, the, the sheer irony that this is how it went down. There is a TikToker. Her name is uh, Sophia S- gayla smith i think um english girl um she works for the bbc um avid tiktoker she's got a bunch of followers um and she makes a lot she makes a whole lot of tiktoks about um journalism the news she also does obviously a bunch of trendy stuff using the sounds and everything she's very cool um and so she did this bbc article piece on it um and and what she offered up was a couple of interesting perspectives um tiktok parent company ByteDance, obviously understanding that the U.S. is by far their biggest market. Obviously, you know, their biggest user, Charlie D'Amelio, American. Um, It's good business for them, the U.S. Uh, So to lose that is really risky. So ByteDance fundamentally being a Chinese company, wanting to show that they are not like closely linked to the Chinese government and like that they can't be, uh, what's the word, exploited, I guess, Mm -hmm. for political purposes. Um, there were a bunch of big tech companies. I think uh, Facebook, I think uh, Google, I want to say the two. Some shit went down with Hong Kong. Obviously, China's been trying to take a more active role in Hong Kong's history in the last year, two years. Uh, obviously, since the, the British rule, I, some, something about the, the holding of the land after it was a colony, before it went back to China. Uh, and it, Hong Kong's obviously turned into its own world. Um, and the tech companies pulled out of Hong Kong strictly because they don't want to be linked to China. And ByteDance, yeah. Chinese company, TikTok did the same thing. 
to as a political move to say yeah hands off it's we're not you know we're not that way inclined but at the same time there have been stuff like um opportunities uh to testify uh, in front of congress about data security things of that nature that they passed up that they didn't go mm. to so it's a case of like okay great you're making the political move but you're also kind of being a little bit shifty by not coming and answering our questions why why is that the case so and the final line of this article was kind of along the lines of if they've got nothing to hide they're being very quiet Mm. which i guess with an app where people are saying things like oh my god i didn't even search that on tiktok i only said that like two days ago i was talking about this thing and now i'm seeing videos about it on tiktok it's kind of like yeah of course people are gonna feel nervous but again that that's again we're in the age of data we're just that's where we are so i think it's a very valid concern to have when you understand how honestly the relationship between america and china like i if if it was if it was an american app running rampant through china what is china's response Hmm. china's response has always been and we see this with messaging apps or platforms they have all of their own shit like you're not going to see WhatsApp as used. Done. What do they have? What's that app? You, we've mentioned it before. I forget what it's called. Weibo? WeChat? Yeah. So they have their own equivalent to things that are American. They, mm -hmm. I don't know if they've banned certain things or what they've actually banned, but it's the same principle. Now you have a Chinese tech that pulls data and we've kind of all just accepted that this is how the world works now that we just hit accept, mm. take all my shit, take all my shit, take all my shit because mm. that's the age we live in. Is that, is that secure as far yeah. as one country having all that information about another country? What do you think the chances are, percentage chances America's going to ban it? Do you think it's pretty high? I I don't know. I'm really, I, I honestly, with America right now, it could literally go anyway. Mm. It could literally, honestly, like flip a coin. That's about how how much my guess is right now. Like As, as with <laughs> many things in the US at the moment, I suppose, flip a coin. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So to draw that point to a close, uh, another interesting news piece that we found was a, you said you haven't seen it, but but I've seen it going around a lot, is uh, Banksy, um, famous graffiti artist. Um, he released a video not long ago. Um, he went onto the underground, the, the metro in London, and he did a bunch of really cute, interesting little graffiti pieces around the train. <laughs> and uh, they cleaned it up. They cleaned it off. They wiped it all away <laughs> and um just just because they were like well we don't care if it's banksy it can be banksy but these are our trains and da 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 da, da and they wiped it away and i'm like dude that like come on come on man at least give us something entertaining that's cool the though lockdown's just coming to an end like at the, at those least... pictures of those like those pieces are going to be so iconic now and it's not it's not like it's the first time either like he's he's destroyed his own artwork on purpose before so it's it's very possible yeah. that he did this knowing full well that this was the case um but so transport for london uh sort of the london equivalent of rta in dubai turned around and they were like well we would definitely be open to banksy doing some work doing a piece at a more convenient location and I'm like, nah, dude, come on. You <laughs> you know that's not going to happen. You're evading the point. It's not like Banksy's got a link on his website to a commissions form where you can sort of put in what you want and like the date of your convenience. <laughs> not going to happen, my friend. Not going to happen. So that was just a funny little piece. But also quite interesting was in that video, a bunch of people were like, oh my goodness, these are the first hints as to who he is. I'm like, no, dude, it's just a dude in a mask, in a, like a gas mask. He, he had his hood up, this... He's never getting Corona. He's been yeah. on that mass life so long. <laughs> <laughs> Banksy, what's up? You know, you know what's up. Teach America.
please called it so many years ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was an, uh, just an interesting little thing. Now, a couple of hours away from London, uh, our, our sort of main topic today. I'm excited um, for this one. We mentioned we have we did mention it on a previous episode uh, where we talked about the I think I think it was I think it was in our Black Lives Matter episode in it was episode thirteen where we spoke about this statue of a tr- uh, slave trader in Bristol that got pulled down and thrown into they got thrown into the into the water in the marina um, the the harbor rather which you saw you saw that video. Uh, fast forward a couple of weeks. Um, today, there is a statue in its place. Um, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to throw the image up on this. Um, I will put but the image. There was a couple of... Fast forward down a couple of weeks later, there was a lady uh, during the protests who jumped up onto that plinth where the statue had been pulled off. And she did the, the Black Panther salute. And obviously, I mean, there's thousands of people or whatever. She does the salute images everywhere and an artist picked this up and they were like this is amazing this needs to be immortalized we have to put this we have to make a statue of this so he called he reached out to her made the statue and they they just went and put it up on the plinth i and love that i think it's amazing i think it's absolutely brilliant um Needless to say, the authorities were unimpressed, obviously, because anything to do with Black Lives Matter protests, and they're like, oh, no, it's not the right way to go about it. Well, you shouldn't do it that way. Um, if you guys want to look it up yourself, uh, the person who, who's on the platform is called Jen Reed. If you just like look up the, the hashtag, J-E-N-R-E-I-D, um, and there'll be a plethora of images, though I've already shown you, but if you just kind of want to see other people's. She's um, an absolute badass images absolutely of it it's it's absolutely i'm very Maybe happy Alicia with this to cry um she nearly cried uh it before did. we started the episode but that's okay we don't judge much um so effectively what happened is that the mayor did put up a response oh uh the mayor did put up a response and he said that this di- this didn't go through their official channels and that any processes that were set up by the the city council to put up a new statue there weren't followed and anything that wasn't going through that process would be removed um which is effectively uh, in a, uh, to put it nicely it's an old old white man's way of saying well, i didn't sign off on that um so it's gonna get pulled down but i think it's a it's a great representation i think for me it's kind of like a stake in the ground wouldn't you say i what i love about this is that a get it like putting something so beautiful on a place that previously marked something so disgusting is the reason that I'm a little bitch and cry. Um, but I guess I guess more than that, I feel like if it gets taken down and the manner in which it gets taken down says a lot about... Mm where we are you know what i mean like i understand that you have to follow the right procedures and protocols you know what i mean Mm. but how much more would it say if the city was like nope fair and what does that say to the people yeah (coughs) excuse me excuse me sorry to interrupt hello everyone uh just this is a quick side note uh we're jumping in from the future it is an update but it's an update it's fine from the future (laughs) From the future, we have results on what what's happened to the to the statue, um, and unfortunately, twenty four hours after it was put up, it got taken down. And uh, Lisa, okay, so tell me, how do you feel about this? Is, did you expect this to happen? Was this what you thought it yeah, would be? Yeah, I mean, I, we 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 both knew that they weren't gonna keep it up because the guy's tweet basically said it's coming down, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm. which I think again, we saw it coming, whatever. I wish maybe, I, I mentioned this in the last episode, I wish they would have, like, given it more of a life there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. been like, okay, this is against what we th- what was going on, but given the current climate. But it's what the people want, yeah. Yeah, we'll keep it up for a little bit. It is against the rules, so we can't keep it up there forever, but we'll give it a week, a month, a something. Like, give it mm-hmm. at least a recognition of, like, look, 24 Absolutely. hours, that was... 
we almost canceled the episode because I'm like, well, <laughs> you fuck, you really fucked it. Like, I, and frankly, to be fair, we should have told them. We should have told them, guys, just leave it. The episode will come out, and then we'll call you, and then you can take it down. But you just need to <laughs> like work with us here, please. That was our um, fault. We didn't. We didn't get in contact with their people. I didn't. That's my bad. I like. Yeah. I'm, you're uh, there. Yeah, you're supposed to be on top of this. I'm the I'm the government liaison person. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my vibe. Um, ultimately um, I think it's just it's just trash just sucks um, it was it mm. was gonna happen we knew that but uh, we just want to tell you guys that ultimately uh, they did just pull her down they did but they did say I something love that the internet got to her you know what I mean like the internet really yeah through, got some amazing images of the statue of people phenomenal the statue and and so phenomenal. in a way it's gonna be kind of like archived forever with the with today's day and age you know what i mean and not like in mm, some random absolutely. photo we'll see one time somewhere but people really wrote it for reminded it. me it, it reminded me a lot hours. of of um the there was a, an image of during the sudanese riots not these latest ones the ones before there was an image of a sudanese woman who got up on top of a car she was wearing all and white it was and the same like yeah, one, yeah it was oh, the same yes. principle that that shit just gives me goosebumps i literally like, have goosebumps now I'll, this I'll, is for the people the watching the podcast Man. on youtube i'll throw up the image from from sudan uh that was beautiful and the the artwork that came out of it like oh. i still have goosebumps it was Man. just like a very powerful moment and i think this is one of those moments for the uk um and for kind of the movement to like just have have a have something have that tribute mm -hmm. have that and and them taking it down almost i think kind of uh memorializes it more mm, you know yeah. like when an it artist solidifies it like young, because they were forced to they were forced to to do something about it like they were forced to acknowledge that it existed and that it was real and that it's right. there and there's that it's 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 not like they can ever turn around and be like oh well you know we didn't really realize it was so bad nah bro you you took right the statue here. down it's in yeah. your face and you took it down because you're uncomfortable um they did say that they will put it in a museum or something or, or something to do with oh okay. museum or on display yeah. Oh my yeah, god, that exactly. pisses me off so bad. You want to know why that pisses like me off so bad? The most patronizing thing. It's not even so patronizing. patronizing. You don't want to put your statues there. You need yeah. your statues in the middle of downtown mm. of every city across the world. But this statue, this statue uh -uh. gets a place in a museum. Okay, fuck you. I, d I don't disagree. I don't oh my disagree. god, that made me so mad, Michael. I can see that, yes. I can see that. I did not hear that. Oh, okay. Do you need, do you need your blanket? Are you okay? Do you need your blanket? All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. I no, no, I know. I know. That's why how? I said it. Cause... Can, how, can, how can people say, do, hear, consume these things and not just see the hypocrisy? Not just like, just, it's okay. Ooh. Mm. I think we broke Got Elise, a bitch guys. right in her feelings. I think I broke her. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 like, I mean, I knew, I knew I'd get a reaction. I didn't really. Sorry. I mean, yeah. Okay. That's a, that. So that's the update, guys. We may not make um, it to episode 20 <laughs> at this rate. Um, I think she's about to spontaneously combust. Um, you're about to see sort of a neutrino explosion coming out the center of jbr um <laughs> if you're in the area i can i can only apologize <laughs> um yeah could, run <laughs> yeah all righty um so yeah that's 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 the update um yeah i want to say something but i don't want to make you more angry fucking hell go ahead okay so there was this thing where there was it was on the news maybe then two days two days later because it's been they, they took it down a couple of days ago right so maybe a day later two days later there was a obviously there was a, an older white lady i think she was a politician um she she said something along the lines of e effectively making it that the that it's good that they're taking down that statue because it was because it was against the rule. It didn't go through public process. Da 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 da. 
it's not supposed to be there, whatever. But Banksy's, Banksy's art could, should have stayed. And, and do you want to know what her justification was? You're going to love this. You're going to love, you're actually going to hate this, but I love this. She said, Banksy makes a statement. Ah! <laughs> it makes a statement. I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry if I'm getting this wrong. I might be slightly paraphrasing it. I was just, I was, couldn't believe it. And, and like, there, there was her, this old white lady, and a, a young black guy sitting across from her in this news. It was in a studio. Um, God, I wish for the life of me I had all the details for you, the facts. But, yeah, so, the, and the thing was, this guy just sat there, equally so, in disbelief. He was like, are you, ki are you serious? Are you, are you, you're seriously telling me that a, a symbol for human rights has to be taken down because it didn't go through the due process, but you're happy with illegal graffiti on a train? Because that makes a statement. Because it, fuck you. Sorry. No, fuck. I'm Honestly, so, yeah, I, I, I might not even be bleeping the cuss words out at this point because I think everybody needs to know plain and simple. Fuck you. Bro, I just... Yeah, okay, sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to make it worse, but uh, that's that's what we got. If you like this content, support us on Patreon. Please. Link is in the description. Uh, our Please. goal is to have a 1,000 supporters by December. And we're on zero. Even my mama hasn't. Ooh, Mama out, Jansen. Mom. Get it together. <laughs> not like it's not um, like I <laughs> literally came out of her womb or anything. But that's not the point. Uh, that's totally beside the point. Um, <laughs> it is back. Uh, yeah, back to regular programming. So I, I would hope it, that even if even if they want to take it down, just for principle, like you need to follow the rules. Maybe giving it a lifetime up there, like you know, what, giving it a lifespan. Be like, look, we know that it wasn't done properly, but we'd like to keep it up there for a month or wh whatever the case may be. You know yeah, what I mean? Like 100%. giving it its. It has to. It has it's to. Space. It has to be given the because. So th their response is apparently the city has put together a council of historians to take a deeper dive into sort of an what the accurate representation of the history of the city is. Yeah. Um, not one that's whitewashed and sort of made into whatever narrative was okay in the fucking in the 1600s, right? Um, there, it's which to a certain degree feels like a cop-out, but I would say offers up an opportunity um, because yes, it would be, it would be a miss to assume that the entire city of Bristol was only Black Lives Matter supporters and mm -hmm. only wanted one sort of way of doing things. Um, and in the interest, I suppose of equality, democracy, whatever you want to call it, that you do have to show kind of every side within respectfully respectfully, yeah. respectfully so which which the mayor pointed out he said that there, there are we understand that there are people who were very very happy that the statue got taken down in the first place um there are people that were happy that it got taken down but weren't happy with the way it was done there were other people who feel like they've lost a part of history of the town and and as a result part of their history whatever da, 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 da. so all of these sides i guess that make up the, this population of the city right it would be i would be super curious to come back to this in maybe in a later episode once we see what what happens i guess to how, it. how the city wants to approach it um how they want to approach both taking it down and what they would put there in its in its stead, I think I think is it. It's like it's like with the it was like with the the Belgian letter to the Congo. Interesting because it I, I'm so curious to see what happens as a result. Where where do they plan to go with this? Because it it would be so easy to look at it and say ah yeah he's fucking old white right so he's gonna be racist and he's just gonna pull it down and put up another old white dude, which is entirely possible. But I like to think I'm ever the optimist. I would like to think that there's the potential that something that is truly reflective of the community and what community they want it to be will be put there. And that's the problem is like there'll be people who want to argue, well, the law is the law. And I'm like, but that's exactly what we're fighting right now. 
that's the problem that's yeah. that's the exact thing that we're fighting right now is the law just being the law and people having to follow suit um with no repercussions or no accountability or uh, so so of course of course yes the rules are the rules but if you're missing the point that that is exactly what's being fought right now then you're just thick like <laughs> mm-hmm. i just and so and so for me i think it's beautiful i think it's amazing i think I think that if it had gone through the proper channels, and I don't know much about Bristol, but it seems like it might not have made it its way up there um, as a kind of a moment. I think even fundamentally, like when and and for that reason, when we talk of when when I was saying when you look at kind of the when you dissect that population as a whole and you look at the different parts and sort of those different opinions, I don't think that their fight like you know their council of historians and you know the democratic process and all these things i I don't think that the final result would have been that statue yeah you know what i mean it it may it may have been like it may have been a like a, a more centrist option that kind of leaned and uh, i want to say not mentioned but hinted at the nice the the good side of this yeah as in like okay cool we acknowledge where we want this community to go in the future this is an accurate representation of where we stand right now and it's looking towards the future instead of it but it was never going to be this this was never going to be their final decision like that's clear they can they, they can change but they're not all the way there like yeah <laughs> to the point where they'll let that stay unfortunately unfortunately what was it i sent you um there was something on tiktok i sent you the other day which was an explanation that i liked so much and i'm trying to remember it now for the life of me it was an exp- it was an explanation of white privilege um oh being right-handed oh yes that i just like when you and it's so simple that explanation like there's if someone if you were to explain that like i think an explanation like that yeah this goes back to the point that 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 was that i made a couple of episodes ago again about speaking to people within a context that they understand and sort of framing things so that they can gradually pick up this idea in a way that they're not kind of like ah that's physically impossible well it's like saying to someone that you know explaining gravity or explaining that the earth was round revolves around the sun people like that's fucking impossible what are you talking about (laughs) no yeah you're mad that's not possible like this listen you're the one who started crying okay let's just let's just draw the line there attack let's just just hold it here yeah you you attacked (laughs) you're mad um the the thing (laughs) so the the thing with the scissors and we'll just explain it here for the for the sake of this is that if you look at privilege like being right-handed or left-handed if you all of a sudden swapped the entire world to left hand everything was made for people with left with their left hands scissors specifically you know i I can't think of all the examples he used now the desk the just everything yeah, drawers, desks, doors, the way that they swing in and out, da, 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 all of these things were made for left-handed people. And you, as a right-handed person, went out and tried to use all of these things. You'd be like, D- you know, society must hate me because there's no, there's no way for me to easily exist in this society. Yeah, I'm constantly having to adapt to it. Precisely. Where and- half of the population is just doesn't and that's the thing is they never even that's the one point that he says in there that i really like is that he says you would never even have known the problem because you've never faced it like a living life as a, as a right-handed person you've never noticed a problem because everything was designed to work for you exactly exactly and it's 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 why i've become it, it in the beginning for me someone who didn't understand white privilege made me really really angry i got even more pissed off because of how aware i am of it Mm. being a product of it i get so it's so irritating i'm like but how can you not see like you have to understand how easy things are 
Like it, it's yeah. so clear, like all of these junctures where just life is easier than it is for other people. Like it's very clear. So I used to get really irritated when, if someone didn't understand it. But again, it's coming at it from a perspective as these kind of things come up and we're now talking more and, and normalizing the conversations around the worlds that people live in. Yeah. In their bubble that they were never faced. It was never, they wouldn't, it would, you've never experienced it. You have no idea what it is. You've got zero indication on your date in your day-to-day life that it could be any different for anyone else. You just assumed. And it's the same reason that people are upset with someone putting up a statue without going through the proper process because in their brain, the proper process works for them. Yeah. Why, you know, why wouldn't you stand in the queue? You have to stand in the queue. I like the queue. The queue works for me. I know that system. I know the queue. Hey, you got to stand in the queue and go through and get your paper signed by this person. And then you go to that person. Everybody knows this, right? Yeah. N- no, dude. No. And, and that's, and that's part of like addressing it is the thing that you're seeing a lot now is people see it as an attack on them. Mm opposed to seeing it as one side being uneven. Yeah. Like if we're living like if we're living like this and then you push somebody up that does not push you down. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, yeah. it's just evening the playing field. That's all it is. And and making it so that people can thrive and survive and and kind of succeed at the same pace as their white counterparts or as their light-skinned counterparts. And Did you ever see the comic about the... And as a short person, this really hit a note with me. Um, Did you ever see the the comic about the the fence and the boxes Mm, at the baseball game? Yes. Where there's a wooden fence, there's a tall guy, a medium guy, and a short guy. And there's three boxes... And there's these different variations of, I think, I can't remember the exact wording that was used. It was something about uh, equality, um, assistance, and and equity. I can't remember. I can't remember the mm. wording. But the we'll three try to find it and show it to you guys. The three, and it's brilliant. It's, it's great. I really, really like, I, I stand by this one a lot, like, which is why I kind of probably lean towards more that kind of like anarchistic, like the, the system doesn't fundamentally work for everyone involved. So we need to burn it down and start something yeah. that compromises on all sides and actually makes makes sense for everyone that's involved. Um, for for the audio, fence. just for a second. Oh, you're going to explain it. Go ahead. Yeah. So the, the, wooden, the wooden fence is there and there's a baseball game on the other side. These three dudes are trying to watch the baseball game. Tall dude, medium dude, short dude. There's three boxes that are introduced because of course, medium dude and short dude can't they can't see they can't see because tall dude's fine he's looking over the fence he's having a great time Medium, he's kind of like occasionally he'll be like oh wow and the guys will be like what happens he'll be like oh there's this, this this thing happened it was really cool don't worry about it it's already over though it's fine <laughs> so you they introduce these three boxes and they say okay cool we want equality and like okay great just blanket statement equality kind of doesn't help because short guy gets one box medium guy gets one box tall guy gets one box great now tall guys gotten even clearer of you he doesn't even have to stand on his tippy toes anymore medium guy he can just see over the fence so it's great so the two of them now can watch the game short dude's still in the position of like well shit i can't see anything next scenario is again still wooden fence short dude gets two boxes medium dude gets one box tall dude gets no box all three of them can now see over the fence and it's great because now everyone can see the game in theory This is your perfect system because everyone can now see. Everyone now has the sufficient leg up in society to be able to achieve the same results. Like, you know, they've all got equity in the system. My favorite part is the next scenario. It's a chain link fence. There's no wood. So no one needs a box. So you just look straight through. And that's kind of, I think, the difference now. Like, you, you look at the march in Selma, you look at, you know, these like uns- like s- stopping the segregation in schools. You talk about voting rights. You talk about all of these things. It's great. We're gradually redistributing the boxes 
in these different sections of society and there are still so many buffs to redistribute but why why like that it's taking forever why not why not restart why not just start with a fresh system and it's not it's not like it's not like this is going to burn the world down but there there are ways that you can that you can just put up a chain link fence and it's just a new structure and there are plenty of the, the, but it's, but it's around the world. not that easy it's not it's only not easy. because no, 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 by no means easy well the, i mean not even easy but you're actively combating people who want to keep the wooden fence up so mm. It's not just about, okay, well, we take, even even if we did it slowly, right? If you took one reform after another and just reformed, like, let's say sectors, mm. right? Like, let's say we focused on healthcare or voting or something that we could, we could just tear it down and rebuild it, you know? There's people on the other side of that who are just going to keep rebuilding the fence. I, I Well, uh, this could be the, the naivety speaking, but I, I like to think that there's, I, I fully believe that there are a percentage of, a percentage of the population now, you know, when you do a split of it, that that fully are aware of the advantage, actively work to maintain the advantage and the disadvantage, vice versa, of the other population. But I'm, I also, I like to think that there's a certain number of people that aren't so aware of the advantage and aren't actively working to keep it in its place if that makes sense so if they if it changed so you know the people who were kind of like that's fine you know whether we have boxes or chain link fence i don't care i just want to see the game i think that there are a number of people like that and i think that probably the the chances of success in this imaginary process that we're drawing out lie in enfranchising those people Hundred percent. And giving. I was them... just about to say that because the, their their silence is a problem, and I don't Precisely. mean it to to blame them, but the silence is violence and all that. It's it's them not having a voice that mm. pits the extreme over here, the extreme over here, and them just combating. There is yeah. a way for. I don't know. Yeah. When I say extreme, it's like you need to believe everything right now. No stop, no pass go, no collect $200. You just need to get mm. here already. When we know that that's not a reality, you have to ease people into that. Like we've talked about that in the mm. previous, previous podcasts. You can't go from, I don't even know why privilege exists to defund the police. It's just not, it's not a jump. Mm. People are, at least not most people are um, able to, to make so the silence there the well it's not my business or i don't really care or whatever mm -hmm. that's the part where it's like okay well the people who do care on the negative side of this are really loud so mm -hmm. activating that middle group activating those people who are just kind of like Meh, i don't know it exists i don't really care i don't i don't get involved in politics i don't have an opinion i don't know and enough I so i don't talk about it moving them to talk about it or at least mm. learn about it you know understand that it exists I think it's because it's precisely for people like those they've been able to not care about politics do you mm -hmm. know what i mean like it's very easy for someone who is super middle class super comfortable their way of life is not remotely affected. There's nothing negative that's going to happen to them. And it's very easy right. easy for them to say, yeah, you know, I'm not really about politics that much. I'm not, you know, ah, pfft, not that big a deal. Um, I don't really, I don't vote. You know, I'm comfortable. I have my job, I make my money. My kids go to school. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we have a roof over our head. We've got two cars, whatever the light, whatever the hell that perfect picture is. It's very convenient for them to say, I don't, I don't like politics. Not into yeah. it. But what happens when it's the direct impact of a political conversation stops you from having food stamps? What happens when it stops you from having a roof over your head? When it stops you being able to take your child to the doctor? And I think that that's the the opportunity not to. Oh, I hate I hate the idea of propaganda, but you know, changing the mindset that you you have to understand. You can be, because there are quiet people in that community too. Mm -hmm. 
So start starting with those quiet people in that community and being like, listen, you, you have to know, like, you think you, you believe the world is this X, Y, Z way, but you have to know that just because of this color of your skin, and this is making it more, more into a class argument, just because of the color of your skin, you're not safe. You're still down here with the rest of us and you're still going to be struggling. That dude who you think is for you, he doesn't give a shit about you. Like he's not like he couldn't care less. Mm. You, you, everyone below this level to that person is exactly the same. And as far as, as far as he's concerned, he's told you the right story. So like you're like, yeah, you know, yes, dude, red hat man. Like he's not actually helping you. And I think that this is why his numbers are struggling so much. Like this is this is why because because after and it's scary that it happens after four it's only happened after four years some people it takes longer some people it's two terms in and they're like oh shit this guy actually just screwed us over for eight years yeah but four years in these people in these communities are kind of like shit man this guy really screwed us over because whether you're changing the name from Obamacare to Medicare whatever the changing the name is and you're just making it worse for them but you've told them this story yeah that community is now in serious trouble so, so using these sort of marginalized communities that are not necessarily on a on, on the race spectrum, but on the class spectrum, that you can explain to this, show them this new world, kind of like re. I it's it's I honestly don't even again. think it's just about class though. It's 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 just about the people. I at this point, and whether you're middle class, upper class, or lower class, some people just don't know because they don't care to know. And I wouldn't even say it's just like not a care, but not time or not thinking that they know or wh whatever it is. And, and you have people in every demographic who feel that way or who just keep themselves removed from the subject. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who need to start, start learning. Those are the people who need to start activating a little bit more. And even if the first step is just doing research, I'll say that a million times over, just understanding mm -hmm. what it is that people are outside screaming about. You've, there, kind of, there kind of has to be this. Uh, there probably is, that I don't know of, but this one stop shop of the real world for dummies, right? Like, like, like what are the, what are the kind of the baby, the easy ABC one, two, three baby steps of beginning to understand how how it really works and and where you really stand in the spectrum mm -hmm. and how you're affected as a result how you and how, how the rest of your community is affected right because again it's a, silence is complicit and and or silence is violence rather is that they are silent but because there's someone who's quiet and they don't really care just because they they personally themselves don't want to get involved in the argument it's less them, if they maybe understood more how them not getting in the evolved, not getting involved in the argument affected the people around them. So when you see, you know, it's that case of the guy who hits his girlfriend on the street and no one does anything. Yeah. No one does anything because they're like, ah, just ah, it's drama, right? Like, uh, ooh, yeah. I don't want to get involved. But it's a case of no, but that that girl just got hurt, got hurt, and she's going to continue to get hurt and her son and whatever da, 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 da. the chain effect of that if you don't get involved people get hurt yeah and i think that 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 one two domino fall isn't as obvious to people because as you say because they, they just don't know or they don't care to know so now that we've uh solved uh solved the you know world hunger and poverty and and we've, <laughs> we've solved like world peace and all that so uh, thank you all so much uh, for watching and if you are watching this of course on YouTube subscribe do the likes the comments and all of the nice things uh, on audio leave us comments reviews uh, all of those other nice things share share this if you're listening to this please share on uh, Instagram tag us uh, and let us know that you are listening uh, and we're not speaking to the empty vastness of the universe because that's an existential crisis waiting to happen um, of course very importantly on a Patreon uh, the link in, is in the description. Go check out our Patreon play, page. Play, yeah. Check out our Patreon page and please support. 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 
Thank you guys so much for uh, watching and listening. We will see you on the next episode of Is This Thing On Podcast. Alicia, we out. Bye.